Good morning students. Welcome to our next video lecture series that is in microbiology the introduction to microbiology and viruses. In this we are going to study the economic importance of bacteria in agriculture, industry and medicine. So what are we going to study here? We are going to study the economic importance of bacteria and uh, after the session we are able to recall the students are able to recall how the role of bacteria in agriculture and its importance in industry and how significant it is in the field of medicine so to first with uh, begin with about uh, the introduction of the bacteria see the bacteria are single celled microscopic organisms that can live in uh, different types of environment and survive in extreme conditions uh, when i say extreme it's really extreme conditions okay and they contain high protective coating in their body it enhances to live in any severe conditions as we have mentioned in our earlier lecture series that it has a, a coating of uh, molecules external to its cell wall uh, it may be a slime layer or it may be a capsule uh, that is mainly made up of a glycocalyx uh, molecules of sugar and proteins okay and these are very much attached to the cell wall and it what makes the bacteria to adapt itself to a very extreme kind of conditions where it possesses itself and uh, you can you can have seen that uh, these uh, bacteria have been uh, found living in even the tip of the volcano and even at the icebergs so this uh, what the protective coating uh, the glycocalyx protective coating which makes the bacteria very uh, um, st uh, sturdy and a very hard surface to crack so that makes the bacteria very safe uh, of course the inside of the bacteria is very nimble and agile i know that but uh, the outer covering is uh, so very made up of a hard uh, covering that it can be able to adapt itself to many conditions so many of them are positively beneficial uh, yeah we know that we have been studying all the series of that that it is how beneficial is that and uh, some of them are really harmful if, if they are harmful they are really harmful and so we are able to see the both sides of the bacteria that it's beneficial and it's uh, harmful so let us take the positive impact on agricultural practices because uh, once we start on with the agriculture practices we can uh, able to know that how the maintenance and sustainability of soil fertility can be tested here and uh, the bacteria play an important role in industrial activities such as dairy you know how the curd and the milk you know the process uh, it happens and even the vinegar which was the first uh, importance of bacteria which was found in the um, human evolution and the uh, production of vitamin uh, yeah, vitamins see uh, uh, not directly the bacteria will be impacting on the production of vitamin but one of the process in one of the catalytic process this of this uh, uh, bacteria will be helpful in the production of vitamin and fiber rating and uh, fiber rating is nothing but like uh, you know they, they just loosen the fiber so that it can be easily processed to the uh, secondary processes and the curing of tea even i had mentioned in the last series that how the curing of the tea is being uh, taken place and here in the this uh, tobacco and degradation in petroleum but petroleum is nothing but it's it's like a refinement which, which has been um seen there where, where the impurities or uh, all the harmful things which have been removed you know uh, by the bacteria and very more importantly that these bacteria are been used in pharmaceutical industry for the production of antibiotics, probiotics, drugs, vaccines, and starter cultures. Starter cultures is just in the laboratory techniques where we use that. And even insecticides and medically useful enzymes. Yeah, enzymes, as I told you, it's just for the catalytic process so that the other uh, process may go to a certain extent. So that's all. Next, coming. Next up, we have uh, the economic importance of bacteria in agriculture. That is how the decay and decomposition happens. Uh, you know when the soil bacteria play an important role in bringing uh, the, about the decomposition of organic matter and they serve the double purpose like in instance they are also the scavengers removing very harmful waste from the earth and secondly they return it to the soil as a food to the plants and the dead bodies and waste of the organisms are being decomposed uh, and the activities of saprophytic bacteria here the saprophytic bacteria is a huge uh, plays a huge uh, role here and in consequence of variety of elements the minerals of earth are reduced to simple compounds such as carbon monoxide uh, 
we have water nitrate sulfates and this takes a, a lot of time to even uh, uh, do such a thing and some of them just go back to the soil and rest of the uh, rest to the air and they are just absorbed by the plant as food and the activity of activity of bacteria is even used in sewage disposal even see even in uh, sewage disposal they artificially add this bacterial cultures so that it the process will be initiated very fast and even in bacterial action on the cities the sewage promotes decay yeah that is what i told you in every, every city in municipal cities what they do is they just add the bacterial culture so that it's been been uh, decomposed in a very faster pace and uh, finally the purification and uh, uh, how the fertilized bean fertilizers are being uh, changed to an orderless and uh, valuable uh, product instead of a waste product you know once if you use it uh, it can be taken to a much higher level and production of organic manure are this though uh, this is a very you know useful and uh, stated above uh, uh, saprophytic bacteria help in back breaking the complex organic substance to simpler forms thus in this process they help to convert farm re reuse and uh, dung and other waste to manure yeah this has been uh, going up to lately and uh, it has been widely published also in many of the uh, articles that we have to employ more of such organic manure uh, derived from the bacteria and even soil fertility will be much improved by this uh, you know that is because uh, the bacteria play an important role in maintaining and increasing the soil fertility that the soil is proportional to its nitrogen content yeah and um, further on moving to the higher sciences we will study how the bacteria is involving uh, uh, in the maintaining of soil fertility that is you have this a uh, you have abc that is ammonifying bacteria the nitrifying bacteria nitrogen fixing bacteria all the three are the one and the same but in respect to their uh, the process or the steps they have will taking and the step which has been involved in the process of uh, fixing the nitrogen is uh, a little bit uh, uh, varying or it differs the ammonifying bacteria is that the majority of plants however cannot absorb ammonia uh, the ammonium compounds as a source of nitrogen the amino acids are uh, converted to ammonia uh, by a group of uh, bacteria called ammonifying bacteria there are a lot of ammonifying bacteria you know which are used in common cereals that use of ammonium compounds as a source of nitrogen and secondly we see the nitrifying bacteria how the nitrifying bacteria such as nitrosomonas and nitrobacter they form nitrates in ammonium compounds right then the nitrifying bacteria convert nitrogen from an available form of ammonium salts to the available nitrates uh, this process converting unavailable ammonium salts into available nitrates is called nitrification yeah these all things could just come up in the nitrogen cycle as well that how the nitrifying bacteria is so useful uh, in order to complete this nitrogen uh, cycle over in the period of time and uh, the lastly we have this nitrogen nitrogen fixing bacteria where the nitrogen is be fixed you know why do we call the nitrogen has been fixed because the naturally it doesn't happen plant doesn't have the capability to directly absorb the nitrogen so you have nitrogen fixing bacteria with the help of nif genes that uh, which uh, which is which are uh, so available uh, so that it has been fixed of the fixing in the mean like some kind of a repair or some kind of uh, alternation uh, done to the process so that the nitrogen transformation is uh, been able to do and the nitrogen is been fixed the preparation of a uh, ansel h is uh, that it is a uh, preserved cat uh, cattle fodder uh, that is prepared by packaging fresh chopped fodder uh, sprinkled with molasses molasses are just sugar waste uh, which we get from the sugar cane and the fermentation activity of bacteria produces lactic acid that acts as preservative in ensile uh, and uh, the fourth one that is the production of fuel that the bacteria while converting animal dung and other uh, uh, organic waste to many or help in production of fuel that is must in a uh, gobar gas plant and uh, lastly we know that the disposal of waste that is the disposal of sewage bacteria help in disposal of sewage by uh, decomposing it uh, they they you know thrive on it to help the environmental sanitation to, uh, to you know the preserve the environment that is how the cycle of the environment cleansing happens so next thing we come up to the economic importance of bacteria in industry see in industry you have a wide applications you have so much of applications in industry and um, to to very start with the lactic acid bacteria that is uh, which plays a very very important role in the dairy process 
and uh, some of it is uh, some of it is uh, that uh, streptococcus lactis and streptococcus thermophilic and streptococcus lactis and some of them are they, all these things are being listed which produces butter and cheese and curd and etc all the milk day milk and dairy products is been uh, uh, taken up from this bacteria with the help of this bacteria and these bacteria which make the fermentation the lactose in the milk to produce lactic acid which helps the co curd coagulation and texture formation during the cheese production and now we have the vinegar industry as i told you this this bacteria has a huge and a lot of uh, applications to the industry in one of that is that uh, acetic acid bacteria are used in the vinegar industry for the production of certain foods and vinegar these are gram negative bacteria which belongs to the family acidobacter bacteriaceae so they are produced uh, what they do is that acetic acid during oxidative form formation uh, fermentation is formed and by performing oxidative reaction producing vinegar as a byproduct so you have a lot of example acidobacter acetate and uh, acidobacter cerevisiae and all those things you can just uh, uh, go through that uh, even in the production of uh, vitamins the bacteria play a huge role the bacteria such as uh, the lactococcus lactis and lactobacillus gasseri and lactobacillus ruteri and the pseudomonas denatificans and clostridium butalicum and by bifidobacterium adolescitins all these things which helps you know to are able to synthesize the vitamin k and b vitamins such as biotin uh, nicotinic acid and uh, cobalamin and pathogenic acid and folates and pyridoxin riboflavin and thiamine etc all these things has been synthesized and among these bacteria the pseudomonas dendrificans is used to produce cobalamin that is vitamin b12 while the um, clostridium buticulum is used to synthesize riboflavin next in uh, the fiber rating in uh, rating of the fiber the microbiological processes are used for discharge of the fiber uh, in this case uh, there are many bacteria which help you know uh, in uh, the uh, jute rating hemp rating and flax fibers rating and this bacteria grow under a very low oxygen uh, condition where they doesn't need a much of the uh, oxygen where they can uh, survive themselves which can cause hydrolysis of the peptic substances that help to bind the fibers with the stem and uh, make easy for the discharge of the fibers uh, there are uh, the following list of some of the notable bacterial species which play an important role in the process of fiber rating uh, some of it is uh, the, um, for example, Acroma, Acromobacter parvulus and uh, Aerobacter cloacae and Aerobacter aerogensis and Bacillus brevis and Bacillus cereus and Bacillus megatarium. Even in uh, butanol and acetone production, in case of Clostridium and Acetobutylicum. This is the well, uh, most well known and widely used species for the production of butanol and acetone as a commercial basis. And Clostridium bezerinki is also used to produce butanol and acetone with excellent results. And for the curing of tea and tobacco, uh, you have the curing of the leaves to give it a particular taste and particular flavor and uh, to give smell by using bacteria. You know, bacteria just. Uh, they are just used to, for them the, to give the unique flavor and uh, they are done by Bacillus megatherium and Micrococcus candesens which are used to, in the curing and fermentation of tea and tobacco leaves for commercial purposes. Next in the degradation of even petroleum, the, I told you the petroleum the refinement level is being brought about by the bacteria where a lot of impurities has been uh, degraded and it's been digested and the hydrocarbon Contamination is one of the major environmental problems today and it occurs due to the accidental release of petroleum products from the petrochemical industry like oil tankers and shipment etc. So there are, there are many indigenous microorganisms which live in water and soil and they can eliminate these hydrocarbons uh, contaminants. The following bacteria that uh, can degrade hydrocarbon pollutants are, are they are like uh, Pseudomonas fluorescens and uh, Pseudomonas aeruginosa and bacillus subtilsis and um, alkyl species and acetobacter uh, woofy 
and um, flavobacterium species some of it and micrococcus roseus and corine bacterium species also all this bacteria maybe you may find it very diff difficult to pronounce in a uh, much of the in a very starting moment but you just get used to it and next we come across to the economic import of bacteria in industry that is you have uh, the many bacteria are used in uh, pharmaceutical industry in the production of antibiotics probiotics drugs vaccines and starter cultures as i mentioned the name of bacteria and, uh, and antibiotics and action has been just listed as uh, some of the two for example i have been given here that is the bacillus subtilis and bacterine that is syphilis and uh, lyphonema and bacillus polymaxa and uh, polymaxin as the antibiotic and it's very antifungal in action and the secondly that is toxoids that the bacteria are so useful in the production of toxoids which are toxins extracted uh, from the bacteria after extracting a toxic the its toxicity is suppressed by treating it chemically or by using some uh, uh, you heat you know they are been uh, exposed to the heat while uh, retaining it's a very useful process uh, useful uh, properties uh, like uh, the preparations of serum you can uh, take an example that serum are used in uh, advanced theoretical measure uh, to disease such as diphtheria, the lockjaw, pneumonia, etc. And also in the preparation of serums, small doses of bacteria, toxins are injected in the blood of the animal, you know, uh, just to uh, inhibit to it and to combat it or neutralize the bacterial poisons, the body of the animal uh, produces antibodies. Yeah, this is how the immune system works. We all know that and that is how the bacteria comes into the picture. And the blood of the animal is then withdrawn impurities such as blood corpuses and such other uh, blood matter are removed from the uh, blood. Uh, the clear uh, blood liquid containing the antibodies is a serum. It is used as a weapon to compact diseases caused by the these bacteria. And uh, even in the preparation of vaccines, vaccines are small, uh, commonly used to make uh, people immune to diseases like typhoid, smallpox, cholera, scarlet fever and here what happens is that um, to produce vaccines dead or weakened disease producing bacteria are given in a very dilute poisons or antigens it has been given very directly in a very mild uh, quantity in a very small and regulated quantity it has been given and um, it has been directly in injected to the man or uh, it where it causes the disease in a man so that it's in a very mild form in a very agile very in a small uh, quantity it causes an infection so that the reaction is being initiated in the host so that it stimulates to form the antibodies and fight against it and uh, be immune to the next prone uh, diseases uh, later on coming in the years the latter may remain for years in the body for the most imparting immunity against the same type of bacteria which may later enter his body and thus create an immune system which for uh, uh, lasts forever and uh, that uh, friends uh, we come across to the end of the session that uh, will solve a couple of uh, mcqs so that we can you know uh, come up to this and uh, uh, give the answers here. The amino acids are converted into ammonia by a group of uh, bacteria called it's it's uh, you, you know that it's ammonifying bacteria. The next thing is acetic acid bacteria are used in what you can see that it's used in fermentation. Yes, it's used in fermentation. And the next is toxins extracted from bacteria are called uh, what do we called uh, that uh, thing is that toxoids as I mentioned in just. Uh, uh, a couple of slides back and lactic acid bacteria play an important role in fermentation process in the dairy industry so uh, identify the bacteria that belongs to this uh, lactic acid bacteria that is what is that is that uh, acidobacter aceti yes students and uh, pseudomonas dinitrificans uh, is uh, equivalent to the cobalamin that vitamin b12 so that the clostridium buticulum is equivalent to what so that it's a uh, riboflavin yes so uh, the we come across to the last uh, session of this uh, finishing with mcqs so that we can meet in the next video session series okay thank you